Hey everyone, welcome to Play Hard and Love Big Radio. My name is Nick Clark and I'm your host today and I've got an awesome guest. You're going to be super excited to get to know. Play Hard and Love Big Radio is the official podcast of Spotted Dog Yoga and Sup Shop based out of Folsom, California and available everywhere through our online offerings. Check us out at spotteddogyoga.com. Play Hard and Love Big Radio is determined and inspired to bring you the people and the inspirational stories that help you live your life to your fullest potential. And the woman that we have here today, the way she cares about people and her zest for life and adventure is going to lift you up to a new place in your life. So let's welcome her. What's up, Dana? How are you? Hi, I'm so happy to be here, Nick. Um, my name is Dana Parkman, and uh, I'm, I'm just a member of Spotted Dog Yoga community here in Folsom, and I'm excited to be here today speaking with Nick. Heck yeah. Well, thank you. I love your excitement. From the very first time that I met you, I could just tell that you're excited about life and that you have this adventurous spirit. Do you remember the first time that you met me? Yes. Of course I do. Um, I actually had just, speaking of adventure, I had just uh, climbed Half Dome, like right before meeting you. I went on, um, went to Yosemite and uh, my friend won the lottery. It's a big lottery to get to climb Half Dome. Um, but he won the lottery and I, I think the next weekend or a little bit soon after I came in and I was just like super ready for another adventure, you know, and like teaching yoga learning to teach yoga, um, but it turned into something different for me here uh, after the teacher training, which was even better. So yeah, it's, it's been a journey, an adventuresome journey. How funny. I forgot that before I met you, you had just climbed Half Dome. And, yeah. Bef yeah. and before Half Dome, had you been climbing a bunch and hiking a bunch? Has that always been a part of your life? Yeah, well, I love the outdoors, um, nature being just outside. I grew up in San Diego. So um, getting to go to the beach uh, and boogie board and snorkel and um, just, yeah, be outside a lot. My grandparents took my cousins and I um, camping quite often in their camper. And this is a funny story. He, my grandfather had the camper that had the bed over the truck the, or the sitting area of the truck. So my cousins and I would lay on the bed and every time he would tur make turns in the corner we would like roll all over each other i don't think you're allowed to do that nowadays but that was a great memory um from childhood is uh on the trip we would get to roll around in the camper <laughs> <laughs> that's funny Silly, so it's, but, i mean yeah. so it sounds like your family was really adventurous yes my uh, my aunts and uncles formed their own club called swoosh and they always were skiing, like every winter, my aunts and uncles went skiing and they still to this day are, I don't, they're not in their club anymore, but they're still avid skiers and they ride their bikes. They're just very, my uncles um, worked for in, well, my uncle went to Humboldt and he worked for the forestry service for many years. And so, yeah, he's just always outdoors doing something. So yeah, that's what was modeled for me growing up. I was thinking about this yesterday. I grew up in a little town in Colorado that's called Durango. And a lot of people that grew up with me in Durango and a lot of people that just grew up in that area still are very active people. I follow them on social media and they're like biking or they're hiking or they're just doing amazing things, you know? And I think part of that is your location, like you're talking about being in Southern California, but also a big part of it is you know, your family. And if your family is getting you involved in those things from an early age that it is, it's ingrained in you, right. To continue to do that throughout your life. Right. Right. It will, it just, I believe just being outdoors and connecting to like sand, the beach, or, you know, like the mountains and trees. And I don't know, just, it, it really brings you like gratitude for the, your being here, you know, just being alive and gratitude for that, you know, and then, and then to honor that gratitude by playing, you know, and, and having fun. That's what I, that's what I enjoy to do is just have fun. So anytime I can have fun, I'm there, um, hanging with friends on my yoga mat, like playing on my yoga mat, uh, just 
being laughing and yeah, all of that. I think that's so true about you. You obviously, you know yourself really well because when I see you and think of you, I think fun. You know, and today, actually, I don't know if you saw, but we posted a reel on our Spotted Dog Instagram, and it was a reel that I took of you and me when we were on the top of Bell Rock on the Sedona retreat. Did you happen to see the reel? No, I haven't been on Instagram yet today. But well, good for go you. Good for you. <laughs> well, I taught yoga this morning here at Spotted Dog, and so, yeah, it has been like in the yoga zone. So it's been fun, but I'm going to check yeah. it out. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you've been to both of our retreats. You did the one in Idaho uh, when you, we had that our first one, and then you came to Sedona. And when on the Sedona one, that hike to the top of Bell Rock was super cool. What did you think about that one? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, I, I, it reminded me of uh, rock climbing a little bit. It was part of it was you had to kind of work your body in a, in a different way to get yourself a hoisted up, you know, like, I think I had to take my foot and my heel, like do a heel hook and then pull my body up, which reminded me of rock climbing. My boyfriend, he's a rock climber. And so he taught me some moves and um, we did some climbs. I climbed in um, Yosemite. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was so much fun to be in Sedona and those rocks are way different from any rocks I've ever seen those mountain it's beautiful it was such an amazing experience and and the energy there was just awesome like the energy of our group and then the energy of Sedona it just like was phenomenal experience I had a lot of fun yeah that was really fun what did you think about the retreat to Idaho yeah it was so fun in, in Idaho like horses getting to go on um the horse rides two days in a row and then the um the water the rapids and learning that Idaho that river in Idaho is like the best in the country for like people from all over the world come to Idaho specifically to be on that that water like rapid area I guess <laughs> um but yeah it was it was so fun and this the group of people that come to the retreats for Spotted Dog they're very adventuresome, fun, fun people. So it's always just, you, you know, it's going to be a good time. And you guys always put it together. It's very relaxed and you guys modify for our, you know, what's happening with our group. So it was a really great experience. I loved, I yeah. loved coming. Oh my gosh. I mean, they're right up your alley. Certainly it's right up my alley too. And I mean, you hit it right on the head because when you go on retreats or you go do things, yes, what you're doing like climbing whatever mountain you're climbing or rafting whatever river you're rafting or fishing whatever ri river you're fishing like that kind of stuff is magnificent but i think what takes it to a whole new level is community and anything even if you're just going to have coffee right if you're going to co have coffee with somebody who's kind of grumpy it's not as much fun as you're going to, when you're going to have coffee with somebody who's like you fun and energetic Will you talk a little bit to the power of community and how community has made a difference in your life? Obviously here at the studio, it's just you walk in those doors and instantly you're greeted and you're welcomed in. And I've gone into studios where I feel like a little lost and no one says hi to me, but that's okay. You know, it's all good. But here, like, it's just like you welcome open arms. I meet new people every day, but at the same time, we're all like on the same like kind of level as far as you know, yogis go is, you know, just wanting to be in our body in a way that's going to create like, I don't know, freedom and power and then love, like love. Ultimately, I feel like love is what brings in community, love for ourselves, love for others. Um, and that's, I feel like a lot of love here at the studio, honestly, like we care about each other. I feel like the people who come often, you know, we we learn about each other's lives. You come in and honestly, like people remember like, hey, you know, how is your mom doing? Remember you're telling me, you know, something. And it's just, it's great. It's great for, to have that care in like the studio and then also out in the community. I think I went to um, a local pub last night and saw someone I knew from the studio. So it was like, it was just really cool. And they're like, Hey, hugs, you know, all that. So it was, it's great. So I'm great yeah, for being here. Yeah. It's cool how the community, when you build a community in this, a place like that, 
and then it bleeds out into the community surrounding right yeah. it's really neat to see how that happens and how you run into people we i was actually um every s first saturday of the month owen and i go down to home depot because home depot has these projects that they give they're like bagged projects wood projects that they give kids and kids have to like nail nail things and screw things together and yesterday they were building the firework bean bag toss oh. it was really funny because i'm sitting there in line and i'm talking to this guy and the next thing you know he knows some of our really good friends and the next thing you know they're like not they don't just know him they live across the street from him and they invited us to the fourth of july party it's so funny that you say that because I just go out, like I went out paddleboarding um, last weekend and just out there, like three people came up to me just to start chatting. And I went with my boyfriend. He's like, every time I go out with you, like all these people always come, they're like drawn to you to start ta chatting. And I feel like the same for you too. Like you're just, you know, open. And like, I remember um, during our, our yoga training, Katie, I think it was Katie was speaking to looking people in the eye and like not looking away, you know, and, and she's like, you'll see babies in the store and they'll like stare you down. Right. <laughs> and it's like they see you. And I think that's another part of community is being here is you're seen, you know, and when you speak to someone at Home Depot, you're all in. And you're like, I see you. You're my people. And like they want to hang out with you you know, and, mm. and get to know you and talk to you. And, and then I always enjoy the opportunity to uplift others through that, through community is to uplift. That was the reason I came to Spotted Dog in the first place, came to the yoga teacher, teacher training, because it's my, um, my wish in my life is to uplift others and to make people happy. And, and the way to make people happy is to connect, help them connect to their innermost being like their true north like what is it inside us that lights us up that gets us out of bed you know that that gives us that passion to go for more and when i do that on my mat when i go for more i do it in my life and that's where the adventure comes in it's just like i told them today in class like plan your mat and you plan your life you know, and it's just, it's, it all goes hand in hand. It's so awesome. It's so fun. So that's, I mean, yoga is the best. So yeah. And being with people. Yeah, totally. I look at it that way too. Anytime I go anywhere, I, and I'm around people, I am adventure. I'm having an adventure, you know, like always, I'm so interested in learning about people and yeah. what they've got going on. And it actually, I mean, it, it charges me up. It gives me energy. Now I know some, some people it's the opposite, you know, like Katie, she is great with people and loves being around people, but it really exhausts her to be around people for a long period of time. So she typically takes time, you know, to read and takes space for herself. And that's how she charges herself up. But I'm the opposite. I mean, I want to be with people and around people doing things. And that is what lifts me up. Right. So would you say, are you more like, would you, are you more extroverted kind of like me? Would you say it sounds like you are? I feel I, like you are. I feel like I am. Like I have no problem going into, going to a party or going to a space where I don't know anybody. Cause I know that I'm going to like find somebody that someone cool. I know everyone's cool and I know everyone has a story. And so I love going to places where I can meet new people. And so I have no problem going to places I don't know anybody because I feel confident that I'm going to meet someone cool with chats and new people and find my people. I, I always end up finding my people somehow. So, and, and then yeah, connecting and, and just learning about them. Like everyone has such unique stories and and i and struggles too and and it's so good to like really be with them and listen to them and you know like understand that we're not alone you know so yeah the light just went off <laughs> well you've got to wave your arms i know it's on a time it's on a timer in there right that's uh, so funny and right now Dana's in the studio. If y'all aren't aren't watching and you're just listening, Dana's in the studio and that's where we record our podcast from and the lights are on a timer. And so <laughs> the lights just went out, but that doesn't mean that the show is over. That means that means the show is just getting started, right? Right in the <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, I guess it could mean whatever anybody wants it to mean, but I, um, before the show, Dana and I were talking about, it's a, a quote or something that I've heard over a period of time that people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Would you just talk a little bit about that and what that means to you, Dana? Well, I feel like for me, the care that I have for others is my authentic self. That's where I feel like when I'm speaking to others, it's true that the fact that I care for for people and for others that my heart comes out, like love comes out. And I and not just people but animals. Like I'm I'm yeah, I don't I don't eat animals because I just I care so much for that for them, for animals just do no harm, you know, and just, just be kind, you know, and, and honestly, like, it's, I, I want to say the right, sometimes I want to say the right thing when I'm speaking to people. And then if I just come from my heart space, Nick, you said, if I just come through my heart space, the words will come out, the right words will come out. So I, I worry sometimes that I'm not saying the right thing, but at the same time, just listening and coming from my heart allows for myself just to be there for somebody and maybe no words, maybe no words, just listening is what is that all it needs. Who I am to my core is just somebody who loves people, cares about people and animals. And uh, yeah, just wants to shine bright in this world, you know? Grateful for Baptist yoga and for all the yoga trainings I've been to because every time I go, I learn to shine a little brighter, you know? and And we need that from everybody, everyone, you know, dimming yourself and, and sometimes like limiting yourself, the world needs more light, you know, and, and being here and practicing yoga and meditation and inquiry allows me to shine bright, you know, so it's, it's such a great gift to be here. You know, it comes up for me in what you're saying and actually not, I mean, not just what you just said, but throughout this whole conversation. And I think listeners to this show right now will understand this is that what happens if we're not coming out and adventuring, we're not coming out of our head and our thoughts and being with people and doing things that we want to be doing like climbing or hiking or walking the dog or fishing or doing those adventurous things. If we don't come out of our head and do that, what happens is we in some way, shape or form start to self sabotage by creating thoughts, trying to do things a certain way to please other people to just like, we really are kind of censoring our authentic way of being and what we do in our trainings and constantly what comes up and what you're speaking to that my experience of is that I get present when I go to trainings, I get in my body, I get present. I'm connected to other people. I'm not in my head. I'm not like isolated, but I'm actually really playing in the game of life. And I start to feel better. I start to create more community. I start to feel better about myself and about other people and about my situation what can be really detrimental to people I feel like is getting isolated and getting stuck in our head and trying to censor ourselves because really like there's no reason to censor you who you are who you are is perfect even if the words don't come out perfectly like I know these podcasts when I'm doing them that my words don't come out perfectly I mean agreed 100 percent you know and you're right as far as believing that you're the only one is the biggest limiting belief I believe that there is because, because we're not the only ones going through this life and feeling everything like the pain, the loneliness. I believe the first training that I was in, I felt like I had like a lot of feelings of, um, of an imposter, the imposter syndrome, you know, that, um, I would, I'm the only one who doesn't belong that sort of thing. And, and honestly, like, people feel that and, and they, they want to believe, separate themselves. But, but honestly, we are all feeling those same feelings and letting go of that belief that you, cause you're you like, no matter what in good and the bad and perceived bad, 
it's not necessarily bad most times. And um, yeah, and you just, you accept it, you breathe, you get into your feet and you begin again, you know, over and over and over again. Um, I was talking to Aaron the other day after class and just reminding myself that we're never stuck and it's not like this forever, you know, black and white thinking um, because like new breath, every moment is just a new opportunity to just stand up straight, you know, get into your body and start again, you know, smile. Like it's not that bad, really. I mean, if you're, if you're doing yoga, it's not that bad at least. So yeah, yeah. right. And if you're not doing yoga, it can seem like it's horrible sometimes, yeah. right? But it's really not that bad. Yeah. You know, you're six, you're six feet above ground. Even I, even in the worst of situations, and there's a lot of horrible things that happen to people in life, you know, even in those situations, I feel like there's a way for people to find hope and to find light and to continue to move forward and to make a difference. But it's a choice that people make, you know, it's like you can either dwell on what's happening or you can deal with what's happening and choose to step forward and take a new breath and create a new life from where you're at. I mean, that's all that we can ever do. Right, right, right. Like learn the lesson and grow. Yeah, that's what I work on every day. <laughs> learn the lesson and grow. Hey, you know, I have one more question I want to ask you before we wrap this up because it's been awesome speaking with you. Well, what lesson did you learn and what was the experience like for you when you climbed Mount Whitney? Ooh, yeah. Well, Mount Whitney was really fun. Um, I went with a group of friends and of the group of friends, I was the only one who made it to the top of Mount Whitney. Um, and I was in, I believe I had just done a yoga training or I was in the middle of a yoga training. I can't remember, but I just put my attention. This is what was going on in my head. Put my attention on what I want to have happen and be for it. And what I wanted to have happen was to take my foot and step forward, take my other foot and step forward, keep my eyes set on one spot. It was everything that I learned in yoga. It's like my gaze being a yes for what I want to have happen. And I made it to the top. It was like, it wasn't easy. And mentally I was, I was starting to say stories of like, I'm never going to make it those type of things. And then I let that go. And I just kept on taking each step forward and I got to the top and, and it was such a beautiful view from the top. Like I'm telling you, it was worth every step. So it was a great experience. And I am so thankful for Baptist Yoga <laughs> just help me get to the top. <laughs> so, well, I yeah. mean, you know, down, down deep inside, it was like you, you're the one that got you there, right? And you got the view that not everybody will ever get to see. That's so cool. It oh my was gosh. Really cool. I did tree pose up there at the very, at the, there's like, they show you where the very top is like a rock or something. And I did tree pose right there. And I was just like, this is amazing. So it was so fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is so amazing. How high is Mount Whitney? Like I looked that up recently, actually. Um, was it 15? Wait, it's the tallest peak. We might have to Google it. I don't want to say, cause I don't <laughs> See who cares? I mean, I, I mean, I just was curious. It's tall. It's taller than I've ever been. It's higher than I've ever been. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. Um, yeah, and it would be interesting to do it again and see. Uh, I think I got lucky though because I'm Native American, and I don't know if this played a part in it, but I didn't have any elevation sickness. And I think that, you know, that's a thing. And if you, if you are sensitive to elevation sickness, it, it's tough to get up there. So, but I didn't have that. So I got pretty, thank you, jeans. Thank you, native jeans. My people were up there, like making masa with the corn. <laughs> Back so in the perfect, day. <laughs> right? Like it's in your, it's in your bloodline. Adventure yeah. <laughs> and, and a lack of um, altitude sickness is in, <laughs> yeah. is in your blood. That's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> Well, hey, Dana, thank you so much for being a part of Play Hard and Love Big Radio. It's been a pleasure thank having you. Thank you for having me, Nick. I'm, I miss you so much in Idaho. But I, the next retreat is in Idaho. So I think looking at my calendar and thinking about it. So I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. You should join us. Yeah, the Katie and the boys and I spent a week up at this place in, right in the Teton Valley. And it's 
the hiking is unbelievable. But even if you didn't do any hiking, just being up in that area with the um, all the wild animals and all the green trees and fresh air, it's just one of my favorite places ever. And of course, you know, like I like the uh, brewing company that's right there too. The Grand Teton Brewing Company is like right oh. down the road. I'm like, yeah, that's a bonus. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm starting to learn a little bit more about microbrews and beers. So, but most of the time, I just ask somebody, "What's what's good?" You know. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool to go and check that out. So, yeah, you're lucky Heck to be yeah. where you are. It's so beautiful there, so beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Well, we're lucky we get to share it with you all, and we're lucky that we get to come back to Folsom and do what we do there too, which is neat. So. Um, well, everyone, thank you for listening to Dana and I on this podcast episode, and thanks for subscribing to our show. You know, the w only way that we really grow as a podcast is if you end up sharing this show with people in your lives that you think would benefit from it. And I know there's tons of people that would benefit from this particular episode. So share this pe with your people. If you prefer watching this on video, you can watch it on Spotify on video when you plug into your Spotify, or you can check out our YouTube channel. We post these full video podcasts onto our YouTube channel, Spotted Dog Yoga. So get on to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube and hit the alert button so you know every time when a new podcast episode is released. Um, at Play Hard and Love Big Radio, we are dedicated to bringing you the people and the inspirational stories to help you connect to your highest purpose and to live to your fullest potential. And most definitely today you did that, Dana. Thank you so much for being a part of our show. And have a everyone have a great rest of your day. Peace out. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> See you in the funny pages. <laughs>